What's up, Team Avatar? We've walked you through the influences on bending, culture, and more in the world of Avatar. But today, we're going full JK Rowling and giving you a fantastic beast and where to find them guide. That's right. We're listing off every animal found roaming the four nations from A to Z. I'm Chris Carr. Here's your guide to the beasts of Avatar. Before we begin, let's give a big round of applause to our sponsors on Patreon. You guys are the best! You're helping us keep our streaming subscriptions and studio space so that me, Wit, Producer Brett, and Editor Song can keep bringing you videos. If you want to help, check out our Patreon page and see which tier works for you. We'll thank you with behind the scenes looks and more. If you don't have any singles to spare, liking, sharing, and subscribing are amazing ways to help out our little team. All right, let's head to the Bossing Sing Zoo. And just to be clear, this is going to be your scout guidebook to the animals of Avatar. We won't be covering spirits here. That's probably another video. And that includes lion turtles, okay? Cool. Whatever, you guys are still gonna get mad at me. I'm just one girl! Let's list them off, y'all. Aardvark Sloth. Remember these funky dudes from the Firebending Masters episode? Okay, well, maybe you were more focused on dragons. The Aardvark Sloth, or Anteater Sloth, can be found on the islands of the Fire Nation, specifically in the City of the Sun Warriors. In this episode, Zuko removes an ancient relic from a pedestal, which triggers a trap that covers he and Aang in slime. Well, what do you think we should do? Think about our place in the universe? Two aardvark sloths are brought in to remove that slime. Please, I don't normally play this card, but I'm the Avatar. The goo gone of the Avatar world, Arctic Camel. The Arctic Camel, sometimes called the Camel Yak, is a furry, dual-humped hybrid animal that's the go-to pack mule for the people of the Southern Water Tribe. Well, what do you know? Looks like- Go away, Mako. They're strong, can withstand crazy cold temperatures, and are excellent to ride through snow. They're Tauntauns. We see these creatures in Legend of Korra when Korra is training in the ways of the spirits. These look like your standard run-of-the-mill camel, save the haircut, or lack thereof. Specifically, the camels of Mongolia. Those camels also deal with cold climates. Armadillo Lion! In Tales of Ba Sing Se, arguably one of the last Avatar's greatest episodes, we come across the dangerous armadillo lion that's being held in captivity at the Ba Sing Se Zoo. Hey there, fella. You look hungry. <laughs> While this dangerous animal has the physique of a big cat, it also has plates on its back, just like an armadillo. Also like the state animal of my home state, the armadillo lion can curl up into an armored ball when spooked. Fun fact, so when I worked at the Space Center, there were armadillos all over the property. Only place I ever saw live armadillos, just chilling at NASA. We also see an armadillo bear in the comic and an armadillo wolf in the Wii game. Guess you can't have enough armadillo crossbreeds. Badger frog. We first encounter these fuzzy little croakers while Zuko practices his Can I Join Team Avatar speech. I think it's time I joined your group and taught the Avatar firebending. Zuko will circle back to these dudes when he tells Aang to do firebending exercises every time he hears a badger frog croak, which happens to be every two minutes. Zuko's making Aang run hit rounds. And 10 hot squats every time you hear a badger frog croak. Zuko. Nobody else has homework. Badger moles. Touched on this one in my earthbending video, but let's revisit the OG earthbenders. Badger moles were the first creatures to teach humans how to earthbend. For them, the original earthbenders, it wasn't just about fighting. It was their way of interacting with the world. Porcupines. When Appa was lost, he ran into a porcupine in the Earth Kingdom. That little porker immediately attacked Appa, and the two get into a pretty crazy brawl. Makes sense. Porcupines have notoriously bad tempers and can be extremely vengeful. While staying at the Black Cliffs, Toph unsuccessfully attempted to get Aang to use a baby porcupine for acupuncture. These guys grow to be huge! They have the body of a boar, but the quills of a porcupine. As they grow, their quills begin to point backwards instead of upwards. The porcupine will raise its quills when fighting and latch onto its opponent. Buffalo yak! It's a buffalo and a yak. Woo. Buzzard wasp. The buzzard wasp, or as I like to call it, the stuff of f***ing nightmares, is a six-legged bug with a vulture head and talons that are razor sharp. They live in the caves outside of Siwong Rock. They'll attack if someone or something intrudes upon their nest and be riled up by loud noises. It's coming for us! seems to exist, one, to make me feel bad in my tum-tum, and two, be another weirdly overly researched gag for the writers, since their name is probably a pun on vulture bees. Bees that feed on rotting meat instead of nectar. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes 
like rotten penguin meat. Canyon crawlers? While Team Avatar was making their way through the Great Divide, they came across these creepy crawlers. With their sensitive nostrils, they're super at hunting and have powerful jaws that can quickly chomp down on their prey. As our gang found out, bringing munchies with you can attract these little dudes. <laughs> Canyon crawlers are a sort of crocodile spider hybrid. Much like a traditional anthropod, as a segmented body made up of a head and a trunk with four skinny little legs attached to it. Why are they called canyon crawlers? Well, they they crawl up canyons. They're so gross. I hate bugs. Have we established that I hate bugs? We need to get out of this canyon. I won't die down here. I won't become part of the food chain. Cat deer, able to be domesticated, as we see with Mula, Juan's cat deer. You ready to go, Mula? You sure you want to leave? Yes. It's time I see the rest of the world. Cat owl, for when you don't know what to pick as you're familiar and you want something that can deliver your Hogwarts mail, but also not care about you. We first come across the cat owl in a bossing say pet shop. Cat owl fun facts. According to the Avatar website, people who are superstitious believe crossing the path of a cat owl is bad luck. Also, the Chinese word for owl literally translates to cat-headed eagle. So, cat owl. Cat gator. Of course you'd find something named a cat gator in the foggy swamp. This hybrid is a large, dark reptile with a flat head and little whiskers. Its mouth is lined with sharp chompers. As I'm sure you can deduce from its catfish traits, these creatures are bottom feeders. And as a southern gal, all I'm wondering is how do they fry up? You've got plenty of those big things wandering around. You want me to eat old Slim? He's like a member of the family. Cranefish. This scaly bird is known for being incredibly noisy. The air nomads would make kites in the likeness of cranefish for Yang Chan's festival, the only known celebration of the air nomads according to Avatar Comics. Deer dog. For me, these little dudes just look like Max all dolled up by the Grinch. We spot one that was chilling by a house Mako and Bo Lin ran by in an attempt to lose some of Mako's adoring fans. Dragons. The original firebenders, dragons in the world of Avatar are pretty much identical to what we've seen before in mythology. In the age of Rava, these fire-breathing creatures taught the Sun Warriors, the precursors to the Fire Nation, how to bend. In Avatar, dragons are based on several different cultures. They had the look of the Chinese interpretation of dragons, four toes on each foot, which is how dragons are drawn in Korea, and their fire-breathing ability is common in more European concepts of dragons. Dragon moose. Dragon moose are used to pull carriages in the Fire Nation. These beasts share dragon traits like their winged ears and long whiskers around the corners of their mouths. They also have a row of dorsal spines down their backs. Dragonfly, but like literally, not the run of the mill ones y'all see in your yards. We encounter these flying reptilian fellows when they're released from the Ba Sing Se Zoo and start harassing folks. As we see in Last Airbender, these dragonflies are responsive to the air bison whistle and can become lethargic if they aren't given enough space to roam around. Eelhound. These amphibious creatures can travel at super speed both on land and on the water. Like a duck boat. Y'all been on a duck boat tour in Boston? Okay, honestly, these are really slow and goofy, but I'm trying to shoehorn these in here because my family and producer brother from Boston. Give our town money. It's weird to say, but the comet actually looks beautiful. The eel hound is a cross between eels and greyhounds and is very wild by nature, making it very difficult to train. Elephant mandrill, another zoo beastie. Wonder what Rafiki would look like if he got swole? Look no further than the elephant mandrill. While it typically exhibits calm, dog-like behaviors, be warned, these guys can exhibit wild, aggressive behavior when spooked. Dilophicans? What are you doing down there? On second thought. Elephant rat. The elephant rat is a small rodent covered in fur with a pink tail, white markings, and a long trunk nose. During her time in the Fire Nation prison, Hama used elephant rats to practice her bloodbending. Ooh. Once I had mastered the rats, I was ready for the men. <laughs> Fire ferret. Look at these precious red panda looking babies. Shout out to my brother Hei who adores red pandas and thus is obsessed with Pabu. And the red panda thing isn't off. The name uses the Chinese name for red pandas, which literally translates to Firefox in English. No, oh. Naga. <gasps> Pabu's a friend, not a snack. These cuddly dudes are cute and docile and make for great pets and can even learn how to perform tricks and stunts. 
Keep them away from pythacondas, though. Firefoxes are tasty treats to them. Flopsy the goat gorilla. King Boomy's beloved pet who loved a good belly rub. Flopsy is actually the only goat gorilla known to be tamed. Ah! Ah! Flopsy! Yeah. Flutterbat. This bat butterfly is found in the Forgetful Valley, a forest connected to the spirit world. Flying Air Bison. Also known as Sky Bison, or simply Air Bison, these creatures are holy to the air nomads. Not only were they the teachers of airbending in the era of Rava, they're the companion of choice for air nomads. As I mentioned in my airbending video, the airbender's tattoos that trace the pathways of chi are done in tribute to these noble beasts. Choose well. A sky bison is a companion for life. Originally, the initial air bison design looked much more like a sea manatee. Flying boar. Let's talk about the symbol of the Beifong family, the flying boar. While he was going through the foggy swamp, Aang visualized flying boar next to a laughing girl in a white dress. The vision would of course lead him to Toph, who would become Aang's earthbending instructor. So we don't actually see any of these boars in the show, but that's a pretty dope coat of arms in my opinion. Flying dolphin fish. Here's another creature featured in the comic and later in Korra. The flying dolphin fish has a calm demeanor and a stout build, making it ideal for traveling on. These creatures love living in open waters and traveling in small pods. They're the Lapras's of Avatar. Fox antelope. Just like real world antelopes, fox antelopes are herbivores that enjoy feeding on grass and plants. Their spiraled horns are a lot like those of male black bucks, an antelope breed native to the grasslands of India. Frog squirrel. Okay, I really want one of these as a pet, y'all. It's so awkward and big-eyed. It looks like my dog Trico, who looks like Rami Malek. These guys hop like a frog, but have the nimble nature and dexterity of a squirrel. Gamsbok bull, resident of the Ba Sing Se Su. Its body is muscular and bovine in build. Gillicorn. The gillicorn is a teeny lizard looking reptile that roams the Siwong Desert. Years ago, giant gillicorns roamed, but by the time we come across them in 100 AG, the big guns are no longer around. Goat dog. This zoo bound beast draws inspiration from a bunch of puppers such as Yorkshire Terriers, Shih Tzus, West Highland Terriers, English Sheepdogs, and of course, goats. Hippo cow. Sincerely, this is one of my favorite animals in Avatar because he's just so goofy looking. Hippo cows surprisingly enjoy eating meat, weird, and are found in the Fire Nation. Hog monkey. Fun fact, one of the Avatar relics is actually a wooden hog monkey toy. While these ape-like creatures don't look particularly swiney, they definitely sound like pigs. <laughs> these guys are absolute troublemakers. There's no validity to this theory, but I like to think that they were inspired by the rascally monkeys in Jumanji. Fight me all you want, I really like this theory. Don't worry, I'm great with animals. Hybrid pigs. We see a ton of these in the show. They're mixed with sheep, they're mixed with cows, they're everywhere, they're your go-to farm animal. All your breakfasts packed into one creature. <laughs> Iguana parrot. The go-to pet of any pirate, the iguana parrot is very temperamental and is fiercely loyal to whoever's shoulder they've chosen to perch on. These reptile birds can be typically found in the Earth Kingdom. Iguana seal. The iguana seal has the flippers of a seal and the body of an iguana. The iguana seal is not only modeled off of the reptiles of the Galapagos Islands, but also after the mythical siren. Iguana seals are known to lure sailors with their call. Of course, the sailors kill the lizards in this case, so little artistic license. Jackalope. I was honestly hesitant to include the jackalope since it's not specific to Avatar, but rather North American folklore. But then I figured someone in the comments would freak out, so here we are. Other than dragons, the jackalope is the only critter to pop up in the series that's based on creatures in real world mythology. In the world of Avatar, the jackalope can be found in the Siwang Desert. Koala sheep. These timid, sleepy creatures spend most of their time sleeping. They're pretty oblivious to their surroundings, to the point where you can just use them as a pillow and they'll barely notice. Why don't you get right down to business and tell me what's been bothering you? You know what's bothering me. I have to fight the Fire Lord in a few days. Komodo Rhino. Komodo Rhinos look straight out of 300. During the Hundred Year War, these beasts were the go-to beasts of burden, carrying the Fire Nation cavalry, which seems like a smart move. It's said that their hides are just as tough as steel. Just like how my home state boasts mechanical bulls, the Fire Nation apparently had mechanical Komodo Rhinos to test your skill on at bars. So real life or avatar world, don't embarrass yourself, guys. Rough Rhinos to the town! Lion Vulture. The Lion Vulture was inspired not only by vultures, but by griffins as well. 
Despite both lions and vultures being meat eaters, the lion vulture is a huge fan of cabbages. Lizard cow. Found in Republic City, the lizard cow looks a lot like a gargoyle and can be found scavenging for scraps throughout the city. Mongoose lizard. We've seen Azula and her girl gang riding mongoose lizards in the series. These reptiles originated in the jungles of the Fire Nation and are known for their incredible tracking skills. They're also capable of running across water. Moth Wasp. Another comic book critter, moth wasps shot out of the mouth of a wolf spirit and attacked Team Avatar. Gross. Ostrich Horse. Used in both the Earth Kingdom and Fire Nation, ostrich horses are for transportation and carrying goods. They basically served as the horses of the world of Avatar. Otter Penguin. One of the first hybrid creatures we saw, setting the stage for all the other odd blends we'd come across over the shows and comics. We all know they're great for sledding on when you're hanging out with your water tribe buds, but did you know that their whiskers are based on the Fu Manchu? Also, there's a little bit of confusion on these guys. The show makes it seem that otter penguins are only native to the southern water tribe, but Avatar The Last Airbender video game has you slipping and sliding on them up in the north? Let me know if you think that's an oversight, glitch, or downright wrong. <laughs> Platypus bear. These huge mammals usually reside in the forests of the Earth Kingdom, and their design is downright off-putting. Look at that maw! That is horrifying! These creatures are vicious and are notorious for attacking humans. That being said, they can be tamed and are often used for security and entertainment purposes. Also, they're a mammal that lays eggs. So anytime you're spooked, just think how people make them wear fezes and that they lay eggs. Makes them a scooch less intimidating. <laughs> Polar Bear Dog. Ah, the chosen pet of Avatar Korra, which is very interesting because historically, the Water Tribe hunted these beasts. Polar Bear Dogs are basically if a polar bear fell in love with a Labrador. Their design was based on real world dogs like the Kangal Sheep Dog and the Great Pyrenees. Like polar bears, their large front paws help distribute their weight as they walk along ice. Poodle Monkey. You don't actually get to see one of these little guys, but they're mentioned by a supremely tacky mean girl that passes Katara and Toph as they exit the spa. Don't listen to them. Let's just keep walking. I think she looks cute. Like that time we put a sweater on your pet poodle monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I expect these are the purse dogs of the region. The good one. Like your poodle monkey. <laughs> you know what else is a good one? <laughs> Possum chicken. You'd assume this is the great delicacy of the foggy swamp, right? We only see one of these in the series exhibiting traditional possum behavior, hanging upside down from a branch. How you like that possum chicken? Tastes just like Arctic hen. Pythaconda. I mentioned these guys earlier on the list. While they're kept as domestic pets, pythacondas are aggressive by nature and will attack humans if they feel threatened. Like pythons, they coil their prey and squeeze the life out of them. What a cute pet. Quilt chameleon. Another reptile found in the forests of the Earth Kingdom, quilled chameleons have quills like porcupines and the ability to camouflage their skin to blend in with their surroundings. Some debate that those quills are more feathery than they are porcupiney, so I leave that debate up to you, avatar sleuths. Rabaroo. The Rabaroo, like so many other of these hybrids, makes its one and only appearance in the episode Tales of Ba Sing Se. What kind of animal is that? Ooh, that's a Rabaroo. I wish I could get her a big open prairie like she likes and let her hop her way to happiness. While most of us probably found this creature, its babies, and its cabbage destruction adorable, apparently one of the creature's designers on the show was completely freaked out by it. Raven Eagle. Raven Eagles can be used much like messenger pigeons, despite being vicious birds of prey. While I definitely wouldn't give my notes to something that could bite my hand off, it makes sense that Combustion Man trusted these predators. Ring-tailed winged lemurs. We now come to a fan favorite, the ring-tailed winged lemur, like our dear pal Momo. These creatures are based on lemurs and sugar gliders, and, as we see in the series, can be pretty mischievous, but they make fantastic companions. They can be found roaming the air temples of the air nomads. What are you gonna name him? Momo. <laughs> Sabertooth moose lion. Fufu cuddly poops. Okay, that's just what Sokka calls the little cub saber-toothed moose lion he comes across. And sure, they seem to grow up to be a bit surly, but that little guy was precious. We found your cub. I'd vow not to eat meat again if that little guy saved me too. These Earth Kingdom mammals are obviously protective of their own, but are supposedly even killed most of the time if you stay out of their way. 
Sand shark. Sand sharks can be found in the Earth Kingdom Siwang Desert and are said to be even bigger than airships. These creatures move underground in search of their prey and then burst through the sand to launch their attack. All right! You can't have serpents pass without a serpent. This avatar version of the Loch Ness Monster lets out a blood-curdling scream right before it attacks. I'll distract it. Katara, get everyone across. Shushu. The Shushu is a mole-like mammal known for its tracking skills and its paralyzing saliva. The most prominent Shushu in the Avatar universe is bounty hunter June's pet, Nyla. Mmm, snuffly woofly. Whoa! Careful there. Okay. So who's got something with the Avatar scent on it? This animal is said to be inspired by anteaters, German shepherds, and of course, moles. <laughs> spider cat. Even though we don't see a live one of these, I think it's important to note the mounted spider cat we see in the episode The Library. We also see the head of some sort of walrus yak. Now, those names haven't been officially confirmed, but I would love to know more about these creatures and why their heads were hanging on a pillar. The head of anthropology at Ba Sing Se University. You should leave the way you came, unless you want to become a stuffed head of anthropology. Seems like showing us that has to have some sort of significance, right? Could just be set dressing, though. Tiger seal. We only see these zebra-striped seals in the pilot episode of Avatar. And good riddance! They eat otter penguins, and we've established right away that those are the animals we know, love, and prefer. Toucan Puffin. The Toucan Puffin resides in the Fire Nation and is extremely friendly. Compared to the other hybrids of Avatar, these ones don't look too zany, but given their Fire Nation residence, that doesn't keep Sokka from judging them and calling them enemy birds. Turtle Seal. Turtle seals live and travel in herds and can be found swimming in the tunnels of the Northern Water Tribe. They're considered to be extremely lovable, but mostly keep to themselves. Be quiet! These may look like your run of the mill bats. Wolf bats are the size of wolves. That's huge. Luckily, these guys are scared of fire, so bring a firebender or a blowtorch with you when you traverse the caves of the Earth Kingdom. Um, okay, am I missing? Yes! Oh, the Earth King's super special pet, his bear! Nice trick. Just take the bear. Bosco! This is a vast, vast world, so let me know if there are any beasts I left out of this guide. Be sure to include any information you want to share with your fellow Avatar aficionados in the comments down below. If you want more Avatar or other Nicktoons, just click to the left of my face. Or you can watch us on Roku or Plex. Once again, huge thank you to our sponsors on Patreon, and thank you for watching. See you, Space Cowboy.